This video is part two for Earth Studio Tools 1.2. In this video, we will focus on the marker maker. If you have previously downloaded version 1.2, make sure you've updated to version 1.21, as this includes an updated code set for the marker maker. In this project, we're gonna create track points in Google Earth Studio and import them into Blender. Within Blender, we're gonna create a marker template and then use that template to create place markers for the track points. We will then modify and customize the individual markers and then composite the place markers with our existing project. This project is based on the part one video, so we will be extending the Google Earth Studio, Blender and After Effects projects. So let's get started. Jumping over to our Google Earth Studio project, we'll create a copy. We'll call this one Valencia Route Places. Then using our track point window, we're going to select the second track point all the way to the bottom and delete them. We want to make sure that we keep our first track point as this is our anchor track point. To make things less confusing, we'll hide our KML elements. Then going through our scene, we'll place track points on the buildings or attractions we want to highlight. We'll give each track point a name that we want to appear on the place marker. Once we've added all of our track points and correctly named them, we'll go to File, Export, and then Export 3D Data. We'll save this file with a different file name to identify it. Now jumping back over to Blender, we're going to erase the previous track points that we used for our altitude. This is done by selecting GES World, and then while holding the Shift key, selecting the last track point. We want to make sure that we leave the camera. We'll then right mouse click and select Delete. You can see here that our camera remains in the main collection. We'll now import our new JSON file. We'll start by selecting the imported collection. We'll then select the JSON file we just saved. Since everything else is the same, the image sequence can remain. We'll then click on the Import Earth Studio button. This has recreated our GES world with our new track points. The marker maker will only create markers for visible track points. If you hide any track points, they will be skipped. We're now ready to create our template. I'm going to create the template in the imported collection. This way I can hide it later on. I'm going to start with a circle mesh and then resize it so I can see it on the screen. Then I'll press tab to enter edit mode and seven on the number pad to get an overhead view. Then going to select the right side, leaving the center, and drag out the points. I'll then select the left side and drag out the points an equal amount. This gives me a rounded rectangle where I can place the text. I then want to create an arrow down, so I'm going to use the left, middle, and right vectors, and then create a few more points using the subdivide function. I'll then select the two points on the side of the center, bring them in by resizing both of them, and then drag down the center. I'll then select the top middle vector, press delete on the keyboard and select dissolve vertices. This will give me a straight line. Then I'll select all vertices and press F on the keyboard to fill. There's our basic marker. Now we need to add the text. From the add menu, we're going to select text. This will create a text object. We'll first align the text to center, then we'll size it and position it over the marker. To make it stand out a little bit more, we'll select the marker and give it a color, and then select the text and give it a color also. We'll then rotate the view and select the text object and raise it slightly over the marker. We now need to create a pivot for our marker. We're gonna use an empty object for this. We'll add an empty and then position it where we want the marker to pivot. We'll then make the empty the parent for the other two objects by dragging the objects over the empty and letting go while holding down the shift key. The empty is now the parent of the other two objects, so we can resize the parent and it will resize all the objects contained within. We can now rename our empty and call it template. And from the Maker Marker menu, select Template from the drop-down. We'll use the Face Camera option as this will make sure that the markers automatically face the camera. And click on the Create Markers button. This will now duplicate the template that we created 
with the text replaced from text with the text that is contained in the track point. Each of the place markers is individual, so you can resize them, color them, or modify them. We're going to make it so that the place markers appear as we follow the path. In the collection named GES Markers, we're going to hold down the shift key while clicking on the expand button. This will expand all the objects in the collection. Each of the place markers is a group of the individual items. We can modify each individual item. For example, here we'll change the background color to red. To make the individual place markers appear on the route, we're going to control the render camera settings. So we'll make sure that that's displayed. We're going to set our playhead near the beginning of the animation. We'll go through each of the individual items and turn the camera to the off position. We'll then individually create a keyframe for each of these settings by pressing the letter I as we change the settings. The empty recreated does not need to have the settings changed as it will always be invisible. Once all the place markers have been set to the off position for display, we'll set our playhead to the position where we want them to turn on. We'll then turn the camera position to the on setting and set the keyframe again by pressing the letter I. We'll go through the entire animation, turning the place markers on and off when we want them to appear or to be hidden. At the end of the place mark reveal, the camera rises skyward to display all of the places. We're going to turn all of the cameras back on for all of the place markers and then also set a keyframe for each. Since we enabled the face camera option, we're going to disable it from this point forward so that we can manually control the angle and position of each of the place markers. To do this, we'll find the track two constraint under each of the empty objects of each of the place markers. We'll set a keyframe here to denote the end of the track two. We'll also set a keyframe on the scale for each of the empty objects. Once all the place markers have been keyframed, we'll scrub to the end of the animation where we want to resize and reposition each of the place markers. We'll then set the track two constraint influence to zero and set a keyframe. This essentially turns off the face camera function. We'll then select all of the place markers by selecting the empty object for each while holding down the control key. Then to ensure any adjustments we make are acted on locally, we'll select the individual origins from the transform pivot point menu. Then using the scale tool, we can resize all of our place markers. Then using the rotate tool, we can rotate all of the place markers. Since we set a scaling keyframe at the beginning of the transition, we'll need to set a keyframe for the scale for each of the individual place marks. We'll do this on the empty object. By selecting the empty, we'll mouse over the scale area and press the I key. Since we earlier set the influence at zero on this particular frame, we actually need the influence to adjust prior to it entering the frame. To do this, we're going to filter our keyframes in the keyframe menu. And then by selecting each of the individual empty objects, we can display the keyframes in the graph. Once all the keyframes are visible, we can then select them and drag them to the left so that the influence occurs earlier in the animation. Once we're satisfied with the place marker settings, we can prepare for rendering. We'll disable all other objects other than the place markers so that they do not appear in this render. Since our template was in the imported collection, it is also hidden. So all we should be seeing is the place markers that we want to see. So we'll just do a test render here and everything looks good. So now we'll uh, save it to a folder, create a new one. We'll call this one markers and in the folder, we'll uh, give it a prefix of mark. Then we'll set this to render the animation. So now jumping back over to Adobe After Effects, we're going to right mouse click in the project area and select import and then file. We'll then navigate to the markers directory and select the first marker item and import the uh, image sequence.
We'll then drag down the image sequence to the very top layer of our animation. The markers will now appear with our previously built scene and we can set this to render. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll be producing some videos in the coming weeks that will explore more advanced features of the Earth Studio tools. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to give this video a like. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.